So if you're going offshore for the first time, you might be a little bit stressed thinking about what you need to take with you. It's not like going on holiday. You can't just go out and go to the corner shop or, or, or to the local supermarket or whatever and pick up things that you've forgotten. You need to plan ahead and think about what you're going to need for the next two, three, four weeks or maybe even longer. So I'm just going to share some of my experience with you and I'll tell you what I take with me as a, as a bare minimum. The other thing you're going to need to think about is your weight allowance because it is really strict. So you're usually allowed two bags plus a laptop bag and then the total weight is somewhere between 15 and 20 kilos normally. But you should double check this before you go to the heliport. Right, so this is what I start with. Bags. I tend to take two soft, lightweight, waterproof rig bags. Though some people use gym bags or hold dolls. I also have my laptop bag. Whatever you do, don't take a suitcase or bags with wheels. They're more difficult to pack and piss off the heli crew. Into my first bag goes PPE and work clothes. So, two sets of coveralls. I usually get mine a couple of sizes too big because they will shrink after going through the boil wash on the rig. A pair of steel toe capped lace up boots. My hard hat. Two pairs of impact gloves as a minimum. These are pretty much standard in the North Sea now. Three pairs of safety specs, two clear and one pair of tinted. And into my PPE bag also goes my toiletries. So shampoo, shower gel, toothpaste, toothbrush, floss, nail clippers, razor and shaving cream. You have to take a razor and shaving cream even if you've got a beard because there is a potential that the rig may have a clean shaven policy in which case you will have to shave your beard off. Uh, lip balm and moisturizer. You can be very exposed on deck, so your skin will love you for taking these with you. Deodorant, over-the-counter drugs like uh, paracetamol, ibuprofen, rehydration salts, uh, brockers. Most rig medics will have a supply of these over-the-counter drugs, but it is so useful to have your own, which you will need to declare at the heliport when checking in. Also, if you're on any prescription drugs, make sure you take enough to last your whole hitch. And I would recommend getting a little extra just in case you get fogged on. Into my other bag goes all my personal stuff, in addition to what you would wear to the heliport. Just to let you know, most rigs do have a reasonably quick turnaround on laundry, but don't put everything all in at the same time because occasionally the laundry bag will go missing. I do recommend taking your laundry bag to the laundry just before you go to bed. This means it'll usually be ready by the time you wake up. And another thing to remember is most rig laundries put everything through a boil wash. So don't take anything with you that you wouldn't want getting manky or wrecked. Okay, so what I take for my personal bag is three sets of underwear, three sets of socks, and make sure you get good sports or hiking socks. I can't stress this enough. Good socks are so important in keeping your feet comfortable and dry. And if your feet are comfortable and dry when you're working outside, you'll be 10 times happier. Two pairs of jeans or trousers, a pair of jogging bottoms, something nice and comfy just to lounge about in after you finish your shift, three t-shirts, a long sleeve t-shirt, a jumper to wear under my coveralls, a pair of thermals. I always take a, another pair of trainers, usually my running one for going to the gym. If I'm on a land rig or working internationally, I always take a pair of flip-flops for the showers. Also in your personal bag should be your, your gym clothes if you're that way inclined. If you're on a land rig, take a towel. Most offshore rigs will provide them, but usually land rigs don't. Also remember to take entertainment with you. One of the most important skills you will need offshore is knowing how to kill time. So take a laptop, Kindle, tablet, make sure you've got your external hard drive loaded with movies, TV series and music. I recommend buying a one or two terabyte drive. Remember, you won't be able to stream Netflix. Most people will have a hard drive, so there is a fair amount of swapping to see if you've got any good movies. Other bits and pieces you're going to need, multi-country adapter. Even if you're going offshore in your home country, the rig power may be set up for other countries. I got caught out recently on a rig in UK waters that had been working in UK for years and had Norwegian power sockets. A multi-socket extension cable. Also take your mobile cell phone. Um, most rigs are letting you on with them now, but do, uh, do find out the policy when you get to the heliport. Headphones. I always take two pairs. You, you'll need a backup. Don't forget the chargers for all your electrical equipment. 
The other thing I always take with me is a cheap battery powered alarm clock or a plastic digital watch with an alarm. Just in case you're not allowed your phone, you will need some way of getting you up in the morning. Something that's sort of starting to change now is a lot of rigs are moving towards having drinking stations instead of water bottles on board, which can make it difficult to stay hydrated if you don't have your own personal water bottle. So I recommend taking a water bottle and a thermal cup just to make your own life easier. Okay, you need to take cash. I usually take a minimum of 50 quid. There's probably gonna be a bond on board, uh, which is a bit like a basic corner shop where you can get stuff like sweeties, shower gel, toothpaste, and so on if you forget yours. And there's usually bingo, poker, a raffle, or other stuff you may need money for. So it's definitely worth taking some cash. Take your Vantage card, which if you don't have one, you can get it at Heliport. Take a passport and a paperback book to read on the chopper. If you're a smoker, don't forget to take fags. Not all rigs sell them. Some do, some don't. While I'm on that subject, you cannot take lighters or matches offshore, so make sure you leave those at the heliport. When I go to the heliport, I just wear comfortable clothes. In the UK, under your survival suit in summer, you have to wear two layers, one of which must be long-sleeved, and in winter, three layers, again, one of which must be long-sleeved. You can't wear shorts, hoodies, crocs, flip-flops, dresses, skirts, and whatever you do, don't do as a friend of mine did and get on a chopper in your bright orange coveralls and work boots. You'll look like a fun. Right, just before we go, the last thing I want to tell you is remember this list isn't extensive and we'd love to hear what you think. Let us know if we've forgotten something because we might have. Now, I'd also like to say that if you found this useful, please follow us on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, whatever platforms you use. We're there and keep in touch with us.